Do you know how much absolute dominance at sea costs? Just imagine, over $11 billion. And that's the price of just one ship, but not an ordinary one. This is the USS John F. Kennedy CVN-79, the second aircraft carrier of the Ford class. A true floating fortress of the future, built to launch more aircraft, generate more power, and project force on a level humanity has never seen before. But will it live up to that insane price tag? Will it become the symbol of a new era of U.S. naval dominance? Or just a multi-billion dollar gamble? Let's break it down. To understand the Kennedy, we first need to see why the Ford class even came to be. By the late 1990s, even the legendary Nimitz-class carriers were starting to show their age. Their design dated back to the 1960s. Sure, upgrades extended their service life, but the problems were obvious. A massive crew, around 5,000 people, limited electrical power, and steam catapults that put enormous stress on modern aircraft. The U.S. Navy needed a new carrier, not just a bigger one, but one designed for the 21st century. That's how the Ford class was born, with three clear goals. Cut down crew requirements, increase sortie rates, and create a platform ready for the weapons of the future. From lasers and microwave systems to unmanned drones and kamikaze UAVs. The first step was the USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78, which went through a painful and expensive testing process. But the John F. Kennedy, the second in the series, was supposed to be more refined, faster to build, and free of its predecessor's growing pains. The contract was signed in 2011, the keel was laid in 2015, and by December 2019 the ship was christened, not with traditional French champagne, but with sparkling wine from America, a nod to John F. Kennedy's Irish heritage. And now, in 2025, the Kennedy is almost ready to join the fleet. Has it seen combat yet? Num it hasn't even been commissioned. Right now, it's still going through outfitting, trials, and testing. Remember, even the Ford only completed its shock trials in 2021, proving it could survive massive explosions near the hull. The Kennedy will have to endure the same torture before it can take aircraft on deck. So for now, its story isn't about battles. It's about proving readiness, a process that will guarantee America's naval power for the next half century. Now let's look at the scale. Its full displacement? About 100,000 tons. Its length? Over 1,092 feet. That's the size of three football fields back to back. The flight deck spans more than 256 feet across, wide enough to launch and recover dozens of aircraft at the same time. At its core are two brand new Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors. They generate three times the electrical power of a Nimitz class carrier. And that's not just about propulsion, it's about the future. Enough energy to power laser weapons, drone swarms, and even systems that haven't left the drawing board yet. One of the biggest breakthroughs is EMALS, the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. Forget the old steam catapults that stressed both planes and crews. Now, with EMALS, aircraft get a smooth acceleration, reducing wear on the airframe, and allowing launches of not just heavy fighters, but also light, unmanned systems. Working alongside it is AAG, Advanced Arresting Gear, a modern landing system that replaces outdated hydraulic arresters. The result? The ship can put up to 160 sorties per day, and in combat mode, up to 270. That's a 30% increase over the Nimitz class. And that's not all. The way weapons move has changed, too. Modern elevators no longer rely on cables and hydraulics. They use electromagnetic systems that shuttle missiles and bombs from below-deck magazines to the flight deck twice as fast, cutting reload times and increasing the tempo of strikes. Inside, it's practically a small city. Automation has trimmed the crew by about 800 people, a savings that will amount to billions of dollars over decades. At the same time, life for sailors has improved. More space, better berthing, and higher quality food. What about the ship's eyes and ears? It carries the Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar, EASR, 
a multi-function system that can spot aircraft, missiles, and surface contacts. It's scalable and built to integrate with future sensors. How does the Kennedy defend itself? It's not a gun cruiser, but it has layered defenses. From the close-in Phalanx CIWS, a Gatling-style system firing around 4,500 rounds per minute, to ESSM, evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, and the RAM intercept system for missile defense. Add electronic decoys, jammers, and flares, and the primary shield, the carrier strike group itself, with Arleigh Burke destroyers, Ticonderoga cruisers, submarines, and the aircraft carrier. But not everything is smooth sailing. In its early years, the Ford was criticized for reliability issues. EMALS and AAG broke down often, and the weapons elevators came online years behind schedule. The Kennedy has to prove those problems are fixed. Another challenge? Crew training. Fewer sailors doesn't mean less work. It means every sailor has to master more complex technical skills. The price tag for the Kennedy is $11.3 billion, less than the $13.3 billion Ford. Critics argue that putting so much money into a single platform is dangerous. Supporters respond that carriers remain the ultimate symbol of American global power, and that long-term savings from smaller crews and more efficient reactors will offset the upfront cost. And then there are the controversial rust photos. Yes, online images show the brand new carrier at the pier with visible rust streaks. People ask, is it falling apart before even leaving port? In reality, this is just surface oxidation of steel during construction. It always happens when metal sits without final coating. It's not a structural issue, just cosmetic. The same thing happened with the Ford. Once fully operational, the Kennedy's air wing will include F-35C Stealth Fighters, F-A-18 Super Hornets, E-A-18G Growlers, MH-60 Helicopters, and the upcoming MQ-25 Stingray Drones for aerial refueling. That makes it more than just a ship. It's a mobile airbase, capable of projecting power anywhere on the planet, from the Mediterranean to the Pacific. So what do we have? The USS John F. Kennedy isn't just a warship. It's a statement, a promise that the U.S. Navy will remain the master of the seas well into the mid-21st century. It embodies the future of naval warfare, automation, laser weapons, drone integration, and the unmatched output of nuclear reactors. But at the same time, it's also the Navy's biggest gamble, an incredibly expensive experiment under the eyes of the entire world. Are these investments worth it? Can the Kennedy truly change the rules of the game and become the ultimate symbol of American dominance? We'll find out very soon.